So you getting up several times in the night having to urinate? This video is for you. Now, this is mainly for men, but if you're female, definitely applies to you. But just ignore the part when I talk about the prostate. The first thing that you need to understand is the mechanism behind this condition, okay? And it's so easy to fix. You should not have to get up several times a night. It's completely unnecessary. And if you do what I'm going to show you, you're going to be able to sleep through the whole night and not have to get up at all. Okay, the mechanism. What happens is the bladder has smooth muscle around it, okay? It has a muscle that contracts and relaxes. This particular problem is a situation where you're not able to eliminate all of the urine. The tone or the muscle tone of the bladder is not fully contracting to eliminate all the urine. It contracts partially, but there's urine that's still in the bladder that within one to two hours later, it's going to activate a sensor to tell you to get up and eliminate that small amount of urine. And it just keeps going on and on and on. So it's not really a problem with the muscle. It's a problem with the nerve that connects to the muscle. Um, it's a problem with the sympathetic nervous system. Now, real quick, and this is important, the sympathetic nervous system is normally considered a flight or fight stress uh, situation, right? And the parasympathetic nervous system is all about rest and digest. So when you're resting, you're under the parasympathetic control, okay? And it just so happens that the smooth muscle that causes contraction of the bladder is underneath the parasympathetic. Now, let me just clarify what I'm, why I'm bringing that up. Because you would think that the contraction of that muscle would be under the sympathetic, okay? But it's not. It's under the parasympathetic because when you urinate, you can't actually be in a stress state, okay? You're not, it's, it's gonna be very hard to eliminate. You have to be fully relaxed and calm to eliminate that uh, urine from the bladder. And when that bladder fills up, okay, and it has a normal tone, that's uh, under the sympathetic nervous system. So regarding the bladder, when you have too much sympathetic, okay, we just don't, we don't get the contraction anymore. We can't fully contract and eliminate all that urine. So this problem really is a sympathetic dominant problem, and it's caused by too much insulin. Insulin triggers the sympathetic nervous system, okay? It activates it. And that's really behind uh, this urination problem. Insulin enlarges the prostate. And many times people think it's the enlargement of the prostate that's causing all the problem, but it's not because when men have their prostate removed, many times they still have the bladder problem. It can be part of the problem because the prostate is just underneath the bladder, and if it enlarges, it can obstruct this little tube that the urine actually is coming out through this tube right through here. And one of the medications they use to try to help this problem or manage it is called an alpha blocker, okay? Alpha blockers target the sympathetic nervous system. Now, whether you have any of these symptoms, difficulty urinating, straining, incomplete elimination of the urine in the bladder, or dribbling, what you need to do is lower insulin. What causes high insulin? insulin resistance. I just have to explain this. I'll try to explain this in very simple terms. Insulin is a hormone that lowers blood sugars. Insulin goes into receptors in the cell. The body does not like to have too much insulin. It likes to have normal insulin. If there's too much insulin over a period of time, it will protect itself by creating a blockage within the receptor. It's called insulin resistance. So insulin resistance is a protective mechanism against excessive amounts of insulin. Here's the problem. Inside that cell, there's like a thermostat. If it detects low insulin, it sends a signal to the pancreas, telling the pancreas to make more insulin. If you have insulin resistance, you have between five to seven times more insulin than a normal person. All that excess insulin is going to create this problem, okay? Loss of tone in your bladder, an enlargement in the prostate. So now the question is, what do we do about it? What you do is you lower insulin by cutting down the carbohydrates that you're eating and the sugars. If you're doing candy through the day, if you're doing any type of popcorn, uh, sugar, you need to get that out of the diet. 
Now, I do have a link down below that I highly recommend that you click so you can learn how to do this. It's called Healthy Keto. But what's even more important is fasting, intermittent fasting. Why? Because fasting decreases the sympathetic nervous system. It fixes sympathetic dominance. It's a very, very powerful tool. In fact, I don't even think the lowering of carbohydrates will be enough to fix this problem. But the combination is going to be very powerful. But you, of course, you don't want to do intermittent fasting without lowering your carbs either. You want to do both of them. So how do you do fasting? Very simply, you don't eat if you're not hungry. In the morning, if you're not hungry, you don't eat. Normally, people eat in the morning. They eat at breakfast. And they think it's the most important meal of the day. That's false information. When you get up, you try to go as long as possible without eating. If you're not hungry, don't eat. So most people can actually, when they start out, have their first meal, let's say 11 o'clock in the morning. Okay. If your first meal, and in the link down below, I'll tell you exactly what to eat. So just check that out. Okay. You can, you can download that whole program. But you have your first meal, and then you go all the way to maybe 6 or maybe 7 o'clock and have your second meal. Okay? So you have two meals a day. The key is don't snack. You can't snack. Why? Because every time you eat, you increase insulin. So it's not just about the carbohydrates. It's also about the frequency of eating. So this is step one. Do this for maybe a few days or a week. Okay? And then you graduate to uh, stage two, which is basically going to push your first meal forward as long as you can to maybe 3.30, okay? 3.30 or 4. That would be the ideal situation. Your first meal, 3.30, 4 o'clock. And when you do this initially, you're gonna feel like, oh my gosh, I'm eating less times a day. Am I gonna starve the whole thing? Everyone goes through that. It's not gonna be a problem. You can have a big meal. It's not about calories. You have that first meal, and then the second meal, um, you, you're probably not going to be hungry, but maybe in the first day or so that you're doing this, you'll have a second meal maybe a few hours later. So you have these two meals and then you don't eat. But what's going to happen when you do this really big meal later in the day like this? You are not going to be hungry from this point on. Okay. Now, it'd be great if you could just stop eating from that point on and just do one meal a day, because not only will you fix this bladder problem, but you'll actually get rid of the, any type of extra fat in your stomach. That would be perfect. But some people, I know this is hard to believe, do have a problem snacking at night. They have to eat something at night. So for those people, I suggest you have this first meal at 3.30 or 4. Okay, make it big. And then as your second meal, do it. make it as a snack. Pistachios. Not popcorn. Pistachios. Okay, that could be your second meal. Have some of those even at 7 or 8 o'clock. So you're doing basically one and a half meals, okay? And that would be your pattern of eating. That way, you wouldn't feel like you would have to give up something. It would make it a lot easier. Ideally, it would be great if you didn't have to do that, but if you had to do that, and then let's say you did that at 9 o'clock, then you fast all the way to the next day until 3.34. That's how you solve this problem. Do it for two weeks, okay? And watch the results. Comment below to let me know your progress. And thanks for watching. So if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.